Well, of course, at homecoming each year, there are new inductees into the Bucknell Athletics Hall of Fame and in their 2019 class from the class of 2000, track and field star Dave Pomfret is one of those. Dave, congratulations. What a tremendous honor. Thank you very much. It's really great to be back on campus, excited to be here, and really like so honored by this. Didn't didn't think it was coming <laughs> this year, necessarily, for sure. That, that's so awesome. But, you know, you were part of the Spike Shoe community. Um, the track and field program has been great under Coach Golden, now under Coach Donner. Um, what was it like being part of a program that had expectations? It was great. You know, I came from a very kind of unstructured high school program um, and had success there. But then to get on campus and the, the level of support we had from um, just everything, I, having – travel money and everything was taken care of for everything. I didn't have to think about any of that stuff. It was great. Um, it was really great. And then um, getting to go on with all the alumni and, and meeting some of my best friends of my lifetime, uh, some who came back for tonight's event. It's, it's been great. Yeah. When you take a look at your events, I mean, you've specialized in the pole vault as well as the javelin. Those are not two that usually go head in head. Did you do those growing up, like in high school or whatever, you know, together? I was, I was traditionally a, a pole vaulter and dabbled a little bit. In New York, we didn't have javelin in high school, but we'd sneak off to meets in New Jersey where it was thrown, and, and I'd jump into an event, and I had a pretty natural arm for it and threw some good marks in high school, but only a handful of occasions I threw. So when um, Coach Schombacher was recruiting me for both pole vault and javelin. Uh, that, I was, that was pretty great because I never thought of myself as a javelin thrower, really. Um, and then to continue on and, and, um, and be able to win championships in both uh, multiple years, um, you know, I, I definitely walked up to the javelin runway and didn't look like a javelin thrower a lot of times. So. <laughs> <laughs> but the end result obviously looked very good. Did you almost shock yourself sometimes? Um, yeah, you know, I, uh, the, I never went into a championship as a favorite, um, and came out both my sophomore, junior and senior year as the champion. So, um, I felt like, you know, that was pretty indicative of, of how I could compete and, um, that, it, you know, marks going in didn't really matter. And I was just there to play a little bit. So and you play very well, you know, you did both of those. Did you have a favorite? Did you enjoy pole vaulting more than javelin or did you like javelin a little bit more? You know, I loved them both so much. Um, pole vault was, um, was always such a long process every meet, you know, it, the event went on and on. And, um, and so it was fun to be engaged in that, but javelin was so much about just like in and done. You know, you're, the amount of time you're actually on the competitive field might be like 40 seconds for an entire meet. <laughs> um, it was also a lot easier traveling with just javelins than all the poles. So, you know, but invariably I had a lot of equipment for every meet we went to. <laughs> <laughs> well, did you ever get scared up that high in a, in a pole vault situation? Um, fear didn't always enter the arena. And that's probably what's just different about pole vaulters, right? We're just wired a little bit differently. Um, there were some scary landings that after the fact, I thought, oh, that, that could have gone worse or better. Um, but no, I, I think that's just, we're wired different. <laughs> <laughs> well, now you, of course, competed indoors and outdoors with the pole vault. Did you have a preference either way? Yeah, I really like competing indoors. <laughs> and my, my results often outdoors, especially competing outdoors uh, in Pennsylvania, were Spring didn't really hit till May sometimes. That my, my results were never as good outdoors as indoor. Um, now I, I moved out to California now, and, and I traced, it, traced the Olympic trials for several years and, and competed all outdoors pretty much there and have fallen in love with the tailwind. feels nice to run a little bit faster. Um, but I uh, really preferred indoor, especially, at, you know, we had such a great competitive arena with the field house. Um, everybody came here all winter to compete, and that was my home turf, so it was great. Uh, now, just this past year, Matt Fay broke your outdoor mark, um, but it had held for you know, almost two decades. Right. Um, was that disheartening, or were you happy? I mean, records are made to be broken, they <laughs> right, say. Right, So my record was set indoors. I believe Matt's was set outdoors, right? But it's a, it's a, it's a cumulative uh, school record. And when it happened, I, uh, I reached out to my uh, teammate and former roommate, Brian Scheiding, and uh, – and I texted him. I said, "Ah, there goes my record. There goes my chance in the Hall of Fame." And I just shook my head. And, and I have the text message from him. We were laughing, and, and he said, "No, no, no. Your time's coming." I said, "No, I think that took me off." And and then so then when I got the call from Todd a few months back, I said, "Oh, it must have been the 
when they were pulling my name off the board, they said, oh, that one's been for there for a little while. We should do something about that. Um, so, no, I was, uh, I was glad to see that, you know, finally somebody kind of stepped in. Um, I had already suffered the, the, the pride loss when the Fieldhouse record that I had set uh, got taken down just a few years after I left. Uh, so the, the awards are, are me records are meant to be broken, and, and we like seeing that. And it's just testament to the continued success of the program and, and how they've been able to foster, you know, all the events. You know. Um, before we let you go, have to catch up. You mentioned you're living in California. What are you doing out there? So I moved out to California after shortly after leaving Bucknell, and um, I did grad school at Cal Poly out there. And while I was doing that, I was training for the Olympic trials, uh, chased it for six or seven years, and then finally got to a place where I was comfortable leaving my competitive years. Uh, coached at Cuesta College for 15 seasons, and um, I own a health club out in San Luis Obispo, California with my wife and my two kids, and most afternoons now are spent chasing a four-year-old and a year-and-a-half-old. So. They can pull ball, too, yeah. sometimes. Someday. Mom isn't so thrilled about that, but I'm going get to it, get it going. He's got natural speed. <laughs> Dave, congratulations being inducted into this year's Hall of Fame. Thanks so much. All right, Dave Bomfret, another inductee from the 2019 class.